talked previously about the value of and the copy of commands. <clears throat> Those are the basic commands that allow you to get values into an output file. Now let's talk about the programming commands that XSL offers to do things that um, affect the flow of the transform. So those are things like um, an if statement that allows you to test conditions, a for each statement that allows you to loop around and around doing things over and over again, a choose statement that allows you to do different XSL code depending on different conditions. So I'm going to go over them um, briefly and sort of at a high level in this topic and then later on in the demo we're going to go over them in a lot more detail and you'll see them you'll see them in action. So let me let me go over these uh, commands briefly right now starting with the if. The if command is a command you use when uh, when you have an optional element in your schema. Maybe that element's there, maybe it's not there. If it's not there, you don't want to you, you don't want to um, take any action at all because the uh, because the element that you're trying to transform isn't there. So the if command allows you to test to see if that's there and decide if it's there. I'll take I'll, I'll do this code that processes it. If it's not there, I'll skip that code altogether. Now, of course, that's not the only place where you use an if command, but that's the way that I'd like you to start out thinking about it. If you have an optional element inside of your instance, excuse me, inside your schema, then you want to do an if command to test if that uh, element is there. Okay, so the if command has a test, uh, the if command has a, a, a test uh, attribute that goes along with it, and that the result of that attribute is either true or false. Lots of different ways that the true or falseness of that of that test can be assessed. The one that we're going to use is if the XPath returns any nodes at all, then the test is true and code inside the if will be executed. If the XPath returns no nodes, in other words, there's nothing in the instance that matches that XPath, then the code inside the if won't be executed at all. Okay, so let's not worry about the mechanics right now. Just try to get the concept. It's an if. It tests some XPath. If the XPath returns nodes, then the con then then what's inside the if tag will be processed. If it returns no nodes, then what's inside the if tag will not be processed. Okay, on to the for each command. The for each command is for use when you have multiple repeating elements. Remember the movie element inside of the instance that we've been working with? There's lots of them. In fact, there's 15 movie elements. Maybe we'd like to do the same code over and over again, the same processing for each movie. And if that's the case, then we'll use a for each command. And the for each command will do the same processing for each movie. Okay, a couple of things to know about the for each command. While you're inside the for each command, the current node, and we'll talk more about the current node, and you'll see how that works um, in the demo, but the current node continually changes to each of the nodes that match the, the X path. So if we had a for each block and we said for each movie, then every time we were in the, every time we went around the for each, we'd be in a new movie. And the movie node would be the current node, and now we'd be processing everything for that movie node. Okay, again, don't worry too much about the mechanics. Try to get the concept. If is for use with optional elements. For each is for use with multiple repeating elements, and it will do the block of code for each element that, um, that the X path you specify matches. Okay, so let's do the, the last one on this list. I believe it's the last one. Uh, yeah. The last one on this list is the choose element. The choose element um, uh, allows you to choose between various circumstances. So if I have, uh, you can use it when instead of just having a binary choice, is it there or is it not there, you have a multiple choice. You have a choice between many different options and each of the where children under the choose specifies one of the different conditions. And then there's a final otherwise child under the choose that specifies what to do if none of the conditions are met. Okay, so this one is complicated enough that we should actually sketch it out. And in fact, let me sketch out each of these, each of the four of these in very broad terms just so that you get the idea so that I have a chance to say the main points again. So now I'm going to go over to, uh, where am I here? Over to my very first instance. And I'm going to use each one of these commands one time. So I'm going to type XSL if, and now it gives me a test. And if there is a movie where the at 
id equals m e x p e r uh, let's see that's what the if looks like okay so if there's a move and we happen to know there is one with this id but maybe we deleted that id we can put in a paragraph and it says yep the m e x p e r movie is there okay that's the if we tested this x path and this x path returned a node um, and since it returned that node we put this p in there if it didn't return that node we would not have put the p in there okay and so if i would to do like this then it would be if there are any movies in there and then of course this set the sentence wouldn't be appropriate anymore okay so that's the if let's do the for each so for each whack whack movie there now I'm going to do what's in here for each movie and let's do XSL value of actually let's put it in a paragraph value of the title now, the thing to notice here is two, two big things. First of all, title here is not an absolute expath. It's a relative expath. Relative to what? Relative to movie. Movie set the current node to be the title. But I'm doing it for each movie. There are 15 movies. Therefore, I'm going to do this little block here, line 19. I'm going to do 15 times, once for each movie. Every time I go through there, the current node is going to be a different movie. Therefore, I'm going to get a different title. It makes complete sense as you're working with it. It's just a little bit hard to wrap your head, your head around it at first. The for each uses a select. It's going to return, in this case, 15 movies because we know there are 15 movies inside the instance. Therefore, it's going to do the stuff inside the for each 15 times. And I'm going to get 15 Ps. Each P is going to have a title in it. That title is the title of the current movie. And every, every one of those 15 times, it's going to be a different movie, so it's going to be a different title.